What's up, guys? This is Des, the Money Hacker, coming with you today on our Financial Fridays. We're going to be talking about investing in your future. Um, so I'm going to give you a short video on um, how to do just that. And so today we're going to be talking about Roth IRAs, Roth IRAs versus traditional IRAs. So first, let's state the problem, right? It is said that you need a minimum of $1 million to survive during retirement stage. Now that sounds like a lot, right? But in actuality, if you break it down and plan for it, you can actually obtain it quicker than you think. And so today is something we're going to be um, discussing on how to obtain it using um, one of your instruments called an IRA, whether that's Roth or traditional. And so um, an alarming fact is about 60% of Americans have not started saving for retirement. As a result, they're not able to retire um, at the retirement age of 65. You know, that's when you get uh, to Kroger's and Myers and Sears and um, Costco, where you see these 75, 60, 80 year olds working, still working because they can't afford to retire. Why? Because they did not plan for it and I do not want that to be you I do not want that to be my generation I want that to stop with this this the older generation so I'm going to give you guys some free game today so the solution you know I don't like to give problems without solutions that's just how I operate right and so the solutions is planning 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 invest in yourself um, first you need to invest in yourself and then you can start to invest in the market right and so like with everything is levels to everything right so step one Step one is to save, 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 save. So you do that by either increasing your income or decreasing your expenses, or my personal favorite, doing both. I want to increase my income while also decreasing my expenses. I don't like owing anybody nothing, period. And even in the Bible, it says, oh, no man, nothing, right? Um, but God. And so um, figure out a way to increase your income while also decreasing your expenses. And after you may, after you, you master that, you can start to manage your money effectively, right? And you don't have to make a million dollars or $100,000 to, to manage your money. You need to manage the little that you have, which is also biblical. God says to be able to be um, stewarders over your, your, what you have, right? And so that he can entrust in you more. And so um, step two is to manage, get yourself a budget, stick to it a lot of people you know start a budget and, and forget about it two three months later because they think it's so complicated but we live in a technology world where um, everything is made easy for us you know download an app you know download um, different apps to to help you budget and connect it to your your bank account to help you budget right and then the last step is to invest right so you invest in yourself by uh, obtaining knowledge watching videos like this reading books going to seminars going to programs and then invest in the market um where your money is allowed to work for itself. So IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account, right? And so, <clears throat> excuse me, the difference between IRA and a traditional IRA is pretty much lies in the timing of their tax advantages. With traditional IRAs, you deduct contributions now and pay taxes on withdrawals later. With Roth IRAs, you tax, I mean, you pay taxes on contributions now and get tax-free withdrawals later. And so let's go into a little bit of detail for each one. So we're looking up here, the Roth. None of the contributions are tax deductible or tax de deferred, right? And in 2000, I mean, in 2020, you can contribute up to the limit of your modified adjusted gross income, which is income on your 1099 form when during your taxes, um, as long as it's less than 125,000 for a single person or um, 196,000 for a married person. No phase out to deduct in a Roth IRA, but your ability to contribute does start to phase out at the time, I mean, at the income levels that we mentioned above, the 124,000 for individuals and the 196,000 for married couples. Contribution limits for 2020, it changes every year based on um, uh, what is it? Inflation, right? So as of 2020, the max you can put in was $6,000. If you're under 50, $6,000. If you're over 50, $7,000. So you have to ask yourself, why is there a limit to putting money into this IRA? My personal money, why is it limited? And it's because that should show you that there is exponential growth opportunities for IRA, right? And so they want to put you on a cap, right? They're, they don't want you to make too much money, which is which, which goes into a whole nother theory, but 
you really have to just start asking yourself questions like that. And so my personal goal for 2021 is to max out my Roth IRA, you know, so I want to put in $6,000 in it by the end of uh, this year, right? Um, next, um, it says no withdrawals are required if you are the original owner. Um, down here, it says not taxed on qualified withdrawals in retirement. Qualified withdrawals start once you reach 59 and a half and the funds have been in the account for more than five years. So pretty much they're saying you can't take it out until you're 59 and a half and um, your account has been active for five years or longer. Um, if you do, that's when you get taxed. Contributions can be withdrawn at any time, tax and penalty free, unless you meet an, exp uh, an exemption. Um, early withdrawals of earnings may be subject to a 10% penalty or, um, or and income taxes, right? And so I had to read that a couple times too because that was kind of confusing to me, but after realizing it, um, I got it. So this is, that, this is what that means. Contributions can be withdrawn anytime. That means the money that you put into the account can be taken out at any time, right? And so if you put $500 into an account, um, into an IRA account, you can take out that $500, no penalty, right? But but, but, but the whole point of using an IRA is to grow your money, right? And so when it says um, early withdrawals of earnings may be subject to taxes, so that means the, the earnings that you get, the interest that you get on that money, so the $500 you put in personally, then there's the interest that you get on that, the, the, the yearly interest. So that interest, the earnings, you can't take out without having a 10% penalty or subject to taxes, right? Um, but in my opinion, don't take out no money. You know, an IRA is specifically, I uh, butchered that word, is uh, <laughs> IRA is for um, re re retirement, right? It's not in a savings account. So if you need emergency money, set up a savings emergency account. You know, IRA is is for retirement. So don't use it until you need retire, until you get into retirement age. Now jumping on, jumping on to uh, traditional, in most cases, contributions are tax deductible or tax deferred. There are no annual income limits on contributions. IRA deduction is phased out if you have between 65,000 and 75,000 for a single IRA deduction. It's phased out between um, 104,000 and 124,000 if you're married. Contribution limit for 2020 is 6,000, same as over here. Um, if you're 50 and above, it's 7,000. You must start taking annual withdrawals um, after you reach 75, I mean, 70 and a half. And what that means is um, basically what it says, you know, you have to start taking out money. Um, a lot of people may not want to because, you know, maybe they don't need it or something. Maybe they want to save it for later. But with a traditional, you have to start taking out the money once you reach 70 and a half. If you don't, they will start to taxing you um, and they will start eating up your money, right? And so it's just beneficial for you to take out the money once you turn 70 and a half. Um, you pay taxes on withdrawals in retirement. Withdrawals are treated as ordinary income. So that means, that is the biggest difference of the two. That means once you hit retirement age and you start to take out money from your IRA, that money is taxed, right? And so in the beginning, like we're gonna use that $500 example. So in the beginning, if you have a traditional IRA and you're putting $500 a month into this account, a traditional account every month, um, you can literally deduct that from your taxes at the end of the year, right? So you'll get money back. You can't do that with a Roth IRA, but the catch is once it's time to retire and you start to get um, withdrawals and payments um, from your traditional IRA, that money is taxed versus a Roth. You can put that same $500 um, a month in your, IRA, in your Roth IRA, but you can't deduct it at the end of the year. But during retirement stage, once you start to get that money, it is literally tax free. The growth is tax free. So that is the biggest difference from the two. And then jumping down here, without an exception, early withdrawals of contribution and earnings um, are taxed as ordinary income and is subject to 10% penalty. Basically means if you try to take it out early, you're gonna get hit with the 10% penalty. Um, and so, Again, there's always levels to everything. And so the first level to this is determining which is best for you. In the perfect world, I would say getting both is ideal, 
you know, so you get tax benefits on both sides. You get to deduct yearly. And then um, for the Roth, you get to have tax free at the end of the, once you hit retirement stage, right? Um, but a lot of people can't afford that. And so um, some people suggest going the Roth route. Some people suggest going the traditional. You do your research to figure out which one best suits you. Um, again, with me personally, I have a Roth IRA. Um, and that's just because I want to have those uh, tax free benefits. Um, when I retire. In the future, I may eventually get a traditional one, but as of now, I only have a lot. So after you figure that out, you uh, sign up for a broker. Um, two of them are TD Ameritrade and Fidelity. I personally use TD Ameritrade. Um, that's who my mentor um, suggested to me years ago, and so I find them to be user-friendly. But definitely, like I said, Google different brokers um, and see which one best fits you. After you do that, you, you start to buy profitable instruments like ETFs, stocks, and dual funds. Um, my misconception was once I sign up for IRA, that's all I have to do. No. After you sign up for IRA, that's literally just the account you use to buy your profitable instruments. Um, ETFs are becoming very popular um, in, in today's financial world. And I can go uh, over where the ETF is um, briefly. But those are just some things that you need to start thinking about, you know, researching ETS, researching stocks um, to be profitable. So some tips for Roth IRA, um, it's tax free. Right. And so you're putting your after tax dollars in there. So it's tax free, essentially, and it grows um, tax free. And then when you time when it's time to take it out, um, you pay no taxes. Right. And so I suggest a goal for everyone is to max out your IRA, whichever one you have, max it out because that is what's going to help you get to um, your $1 million um, minimal limit during retirement time. If you were blessed uh, to have a job that offers 401k, this is an IRA is pretty much a 401k, but no one else is contributing with you. A 401k, as you know, company contributes as well as you. I will also suggest that you max out that as well, your 401k, whatever your job's limit is, you max it out. So if they say we'll match up to 5%, make sure you put in that 5% because at that point it's free money. And so now you have two instruments earning you retirement um, money. So that again, gets you to that $1 million threshold that we need to survive during retirement. Um, and then don't withdraw. Like I said, this is not a saving account. This is a retirement account. So if you're going to need this money within the next five, 10, 15, 20 years, don't put it in there. Um, you have an emergency savings account. You should have an emergency savings account for instances like that. This is something for money, discretionary money, money that you don't need, money that you can do without for a while. Um, look into ETFs. Like I said, ETF stands for exchange traded funds. One popular one is um, VOO, which is uh, Vanguard uh, S&P 500. Basically, it means it, it follows um, the S&P 500. And S&P 500, um, if you don't know what that is, definitely Google it. It's basically just um, a, a group of, of 500 stocks that, um, yeah, a group of 500 stocks, right? And so another one is IVV. Um, again, look that up. It's um, what ETFs are. It's a pool of stocks and companies um, that you can invest in. And so versus you buying one stock of Apple, um, that, yeah, versus you buying one stock, of, so one stock of Apple, you can buy an ETF that combines Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, um, Facebook, Twitter. You can literally by a, a pool of, of companies in one, and that's called an ETF. Um, so yeah, definitely look up ETFs. Again, those are something that that, are, that should definitely be in your portfolio. Um, and then creating an IRA. So I found a YouTube video to create an IRA via TD Ameritrade. Literally, this guy goes step by step on how to do that. Um, and he walks you through it. So definitely YouTube. That YouTube University is by far one of the greatest inventions ever made. Um, and again, once you do that, you start to buy things. You start to buy stocks. You, buy, you start to buy mutual funds. You start to buy ETFs. You have to fund the account, and then you have to buy the, the instruments, right? Um, and then last but not least, but the most important one, in my opinion, is get a financial coach like myself. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not licensed but I am a financial coach. Um, and what that means is I can coach you financially. I can't tell you what to invest. I can't tell you how to invest. I can give you free game, which is what I'm doing now. 
Um, I have a company around it where I help uh, high school kids um, reach financial literacy. And so that's what I'm doing now. I'm giving you guys free game. This is all information that I learned over the past few years. And um, I'm giving it to you all. And this is what I'm going to be doing um, for the remainder of the year. So again, but find a coach that resonate with you. If I don't resonate with you, you're not hurting my feelings. <laughs> Trust and believe me, you're not hurting my feelings, but find somebody who does and um, ask them questions, you know, if they are open to, um, you know, allowing you to, <clears throat> allowing, allowing you to be coached by them, then they can help you along the way. If not a financial coach, get a, get a mentor, somebody who has been through this before, somebody who has done it before and ask them questions. You know, knowledge is power, right? Um, and like I said, going back, this is just a step. So I'm just going to briefly go through that. So like I said, step one is saving. Increasing your income, decreasing your expenses. Step two, managing that money. Step three, investing in yourself first by gaining knowledge, like watching videos like this, watching YouTube videos, reading books, going to programs, going to seminars, and then in, um, investing your money in the market, making your money work for you. And that is it, guys. Uh, take control of your future for your future. You know, your your grandkids and your kids are depending on you to to take care of your future for them, right? And so you don't want to pass down debt. You don't want to pass down um, being broke. You want to pass down um, wealth, right? And so that's all I have for you guys today. Um, happy Financial Fridays. Enjoy your weekend. And this is Destiny Hacker. Follow me for more information. Have a good one.